Rise and shine, video game players. The new update for V Rising Secrets of Gloomrot will be released the 17th of May. At the release of this video, that's two days away. However, I have been a part of a closed beta test that ran for a few days, so I've already seen some of it. And boy, howdy, is it good. Is that something people say? Boy, howdy. Anyhow, let's go through my first impressions of the Secrets of Gloomrot and take a look at my own recorded gameplay footage. Before we get into the nitty and the gritty, I'd like to mention two things real quick. And don't worry, it's not please like and subscribe. Even though I did kind of manage to get that in there now, didn't I? <laughs> I'm so sneaky. No, for real. First off, this patch is big, so I haven't seen all of the stuff in here yet. So more to come on the update in the future. Second, I've played on an accelerated PvE server in order to get to see as much of the new content as possible. In other words, I don't know a lot about how the PvP has been affected by the patch. There are new spells and weapons and some tweaks to the spells and weapons that we already had which will affect PvP, but outside of that, if you go through the long list of things added and changed in this patch, it's mostly focused on PvE and well finishing the game. So if you're waiting for big changes or fine tuning to the PvP, I think you'll have to wait for future updates. There, with that out of the way, let's go through what I have seen. To begin with, I'd like to talk about two areas in which I feel the game is taking a bit of a new approach. One is progression and the other is building in territory. The progression is still hunting V-Blood bosses. They're the ones that give you new abilities, recipes and workstations. But instead of going to your blood altar to track them like we did before, we have this. A V-Blood screen that shows us the progression and divides the game into three acts. And you can access this and track bosses whenever you want, wherever you are. I didn't realize how tedious it was to have to go back to my castle every time I wanted to track a new boss until I didn't have to anymore. This feels great. But most importantly, there are a bunch of new bosses added to what is now the second act. Before I thought that the early part of the game had a nice variety of bosses at a similar level, which gave you a sense of freedom in what order you did things. Then came a mid-section of the game where it felt like it was very straightforward. There was one boss to kill that gave you something that made you strong enough to kill the one boss after that and so on and so on. Now Act 2 feels like that early part where there are a bunch of different bosses you can go for at all times. Alright, let's talk about building and territory. Now we no longer claim territory by putting out borders. Instead, there are castle territories that you can see on the map. White ones are unclaimed. If you build a castle heart in one of these unclaimed territories, you claim it. All of it and you can build all over it at once. When you've filled up all of that space, that sucks to be you. No, because now we can build stairs and get another floor, which means we don't need to be able to take up more space on the map to get a bigger castle. I think this is great. No more running around trying to find a big enough spot to start putting down borders on, only to realize some other vampires expanding from the opposite side towards you, which means no one will be able to get a castle big enough to fit all of your huge workstations in. Also, having a second floor looks really, really cool. I guess one small downside to the new territory system is that you can't just find a sliver of land somewhere and start building there. I had a friend log on to a server during the beta, run around the entire map only to realize all of the castle spots were taken. But before this patch, even if you did find a sliver of land on a very populated server, that wouldn't do you any good. You need a big castle to fit all your big workstations, your prison cells, your servant coffins, your throne rooms, your indoor basketball court. Make it happen, SLS. So I don't know if this really is a downside, and if it is, it's absolutely outweighed by the positives to this change. The most meaningful gameplay changes that I've seen so far are the two new weapons and the new spells. I'm especially excited about the new weapons, most of all the pistols. It's fun to have another ranged weapon, and I really like the abilities that come with them. The crossbows are nice as long as you manage to keep a distance. The pistols have shorter range on their basic attacks, but at the same time it's okay to let your enemies get close. The attack speed is way higher. One ability is a rapid fire with a knockback and the other has a roll built into it. If you unload all you've got into one enemy, you can deal a lot of damage in very little time. Or you can spread the rapid 
rapid fire between targets and the projectile that you fire after you roll eventually explodes dealing AoE damage. It feels like it works in most situations and most importantly it's very fun to play with. When it comes to the spells, it's nice that there are more of them and the jewel system is a welcome addition. It's nice to be able to customize more and finding a good jewel has made me try new spells. There are definitely many spells in the game now, especially considering you can only equip two plus a dash. I'd have to spend more time trying different spells out before saying whether there are many spells that are viable. I find myself sticking to the chaos volley and the skeleton shield most of the time though. I guess old habits die hard. One thing that disappointed me a bit was the legendary weapons that had been mentioned in devlogs leading up to the patch. I thought they'd be new weapons, and I thought they'd be weapons we couldn't craft but have to loot from certain enemies. Both of these assumptions were wrong. The legendary weapons are these shattered ancient weapons, which are basically crafting recipes for upgrades to the already existing weapons. And they're nice. It's fun to be able to upgrade weapons and give them more stats. Your character becomes a little more speckable, so to speak. My guess is that these stats are randomized. I've picked up a shattered sword that gives you extra resource yield, which felt like something I wouldn't want on a sword. But yeah, these things are a cool addition to the game, just nowhere near as interesting as my imagination had made them out to be before I saw them. An area that didn't disappoint, however, is the new area. I haven't seen all of Gloomrot yet. I kind of didn't want to see all of it before the 17th, but I've run around a bit, seen some of the different places, killed a bunch of enemies, and fought but not beaten a boss. So I feel like I've seen Gloomrot, and it's fantastic. The aesthetic of the area is super creepy and cool, and the enemies are really fun to fight. I also like that this area wasn't slapped on as the new late game. The bosses are around level 60, which makes them late act material. I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of it and am happy that I have more of it to discover once I start a new run on the 17th. To sum up, I think this update is as big as it is good. I am impressed with how much new stuff they've added and how much they've worked on what was already in the game at the same time. There are still things in the game that I think need to be worked on, but that's not a detriment to the patch. This game is still in early access and this was one step and one big step on the way to the finished product. I'm going to play on a PvP server when I start my new run on the 17th, so if there are interesting things to talk about from a PvP perspective, that will be a future video. One of many future videos. I feel like there's a lot to talk about in V-Rising, so I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel to not miss when the next one drops. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.